Spoiler, in this video we're going to be looking at how to go from this, ugh, boring, to this, pretty good, to this, much better. So here's a basic scene I set up to showcase audio. We got our cute little guys and some coins to collect. We have a player with a player movement script. I've showed this off in a bunch of videos, the tags above if you don't know how to do it. We have a whole bunch of these coins in the level. Each one of these coins just has a collider with trigger set to true and a pickup script. The pickup script's so simple. It's just an on trigger enter 2D. You check to see if the collision object has the player movement script, so it would be the player, and you destroy the coin. And so since we're just destroying the coin, if we go through each one of these, you know, we very underwhelmingly go through the level, no sounds playing, it's not very good. So we can improve this. In our project, we have a coin sound effect that's not being used. That's what it sounds like. And our coin prefab. In Unity, you need an audio listener in your scene. The main camera by default has one attached. To play an audio clip or a sound file, you need an audio source, which is a component you can attach to objects. But you don't even really need to do this. In our pickup script that the coins have, we can just add a public audio clip, and I'll call this sound effect. Instead of attaching audio source as a component and then making a variable that you reference, you can just type in audio source to class directly, and it has a play clip at point function we can utilize, where you plug in an audio clip, which would be our sound effect, and a position to play it from. So we can use our transform.position, which is the coin's position. And on our coin prefab, we should now have a sound effect that we can plug in. So I'll put the clip on there. So now we should hear the effect when we pick up a coin. And since it's actually playing in world position, if you're wearing headphones, you probably heard it pan through from left to right. This sounds okay, but we can take it a step further and actually make it better. There's a couple problems doing it this way. The main one being, as we're picking these up, it's generating these one-shot audio objects that just have an audio source attached to it with our sound effect playing as the audio clip, which is fine, but we don't have access to any of these settings like volume and pitch and other things, but these are important settings we'd like to have control over. So we're gonna implement a new solution, and this will actually give us a chance to dive into the singleton pattern which is something I don't actually love, but it's so popular in Unity that you should definitely know about it. The first thing we'll get started off doing is creating a new empty object, and we're gonna call this Audio Manager. And in our assets, we're going to create a new C-sharp script, and we'll call this Audio Manager. Let's attach our script and open it up. So what is the singleton pattern? We're basically going to make a reference to this class, and there's only going to be one instance of Audio Manager ever allowed to be instantiated at a time. It's the only one. And to do that, it's really simple. You just do a public static Audio Manager, and by convention, you call this instance and set it to null. Let's get rid of these. We need the awake lifecycle method, so we'll say void awake. And in here, you basically say if instance is equal to null, so it doesn't exist, we're going to set instance equal to this, which is an instantiation of the audio manager script. Otherwise, if it's not null, we need to check to see if instance is not equal to this. So this means that instance exists, but it's not this copy of it, in which case we want to destroy this. It gets a little confusing. Otherwise, we want to destroy the game object with this script, because there can only ever be one of these at a time, and this means it's already created. And lastly, this won't matter for us because we're not changing scenes in this tutorial, but a lot of people end this with don't destroy on load of this. So basically this audio manager will persist throughout scenes. Now to do anything interesting with the audio manager, let's make a new method. We'll say public void play clip, and it will take an audio clip. So in order to play audio clips and mess around with the audio source settings like we wanted to before, we need a public audio source audio source. On our audio manager object, we can add the audio source component and drag that into the variable. And I'll disable play on awake. And in here, we can just say audio source dot play one shot clip. So back in our pickup script, instead of using the audio source play clip at point method, what we want to say is audio manager that we just created dot instance play clip and we'll pass in our sound effect. At this point, we're back to where we were. You should now hear audio as you pick up coins. 
which is cool. So now we actually get to the fun part of diversifying our audio effect. And again, this is the quintessential audio tip you need to know to get more out of your sound effects. Instead of creating tons of sound effects, you can create one and then reuse it. Yeah, it's pretty great. So in our audio manager, we'll make a private void randomize sound. No parameters. The two main things you wanna mess with is volume and pitch, with pitch being the key. And by default, both pitch and volume are set to one. Depending on your audio clip of what sound effect you're using, you're gonna to have to mess with and see what ranges make sense for you. But the idea for this is you take your audio source pitch value and you set it equal to a random value between a range. So we'll say random.range.75 and uh, maybe 125. You can do the same thing, but with volume. And I actually thought the clip was a little loud, so I'll cap that at one and we'll just go a little quieter. Now, before you call your play one shot in the play clip method, you can just say randomize sound. Now, when you pick up the coins, each one should sound just a little different. You can get rid of those magic numbers and replace them with variables so that in the editor, as you're playing, you can fine tune this to exactly what your clip should sound like. From this point, it's really up to you how you want to take this. You could modify the play clip method to take in a min and max value so that every single different sound effect that uses this, you know, has their own settings that sound better. So you can tailor it to each individual one. It's really how you want to do it at this point. This is definitely enough to get you started. I hope this video was able to help you. This is the most fundamental audio trick you can use in your games to really get the most out of your sound effects. It's pretty simple, but it's effective. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.